Greetings from the Country Dance and Song Society, and welcome to our web chat for supporting organizers of song communities across the continent. We're thrilled that you're joining us this evening, literally from across the US, 17 states and Canada. And we are looking forward to an exciting time with you. I'd like to start by introducing myself. I'm Linda Henry, the Community Resources Manager. I have several CDSS staff members here with me this evening. Sarah Pilzer, our Director of Operations. Nikki Perez, our coordinator, our membership coordinator, and Crispin Youngberg, our office manager. So we'll start with some tech tips from Sarah. Great. Um, so uh, many of you have probably been to Zoom calls before, but um, in case this is still new to you or if you need a reminder, um, we ask that you keep your microphone muted during the presentation and your video off. Um, we will have a chance later um, in, the present, uh, in the breakout rooms to have videos on. But for now, while we have our panel going, we'd like to keep it streamlined. Um, we suggest um, using gallery view um, during the breakouts later um, to do that. If you're on desktop, there's a button in the top right corner of your screen. If you're mobile, you might have to tap the screen first. And then on the left hand side, you'll see a little that round icon. Um, and if you tap those, if you click on those, it'll toggle between the speaker view, which highlights the person who's speaking, and gallery view, which will show you all the videos that are on. Um, if there's a screen being shared as there is right now, the videos will be displayed either along the top or the side. And you can drag the bar between the screen and the videos to change the size of the screen that you're seeing. So if you're having trouble seeing the slides, you can, there's a little, bar between the videos and the slides that you can drag to make that larger to see. Um, other than that, we'll be using um, chat function for our Q&A. We'll go over that a bit later, but in case um, you want to have that turned on, uh, again, for desktop, it's along that bottom row of controls. There's a little chat bubble icon. And for mobile, it's probably under the more um, icon in the upper right hand corner. So. I think that's about it for tech getting started. If you do have any questions, feel free to put it into the chat and I will address tech troubleshooting there. Back to you, Linda. Thanks, Sarah. Also, I wanted to let everyone know that we are recording this, this uh, web chat. And so if you would prefer not to have your photo be uh, used publicly, we may be making screenshots at some point. So um, feel free to just keep your webcams off. Was there one more thing, Sarah? Um, I think that, that was all. Okay. Yep. So um, next slide, please. Here's a quick glimpse of what's in store for this evening. We'll be hearing from Katie German. Uh, some greetings and perspectives from CDSS. And then from several of our our three different guests that you can see there. And we'll, after the guests, we'll be showing you a couple of glimpses of some, these, our guests are all involved with virtual sings and we have a couple of examples of in-person, socially distant sings that are happening. And then we'll share a variety of resources from CDSS and then the second half will be for Q&A and breakout rooms. So while you're listening to the speakers, feel free to um, enter any chat, any questions in the chat so they can be available for the Q&A. So without further ado, let's, next slide please. Katie's going to share some greetings <laughs> from CDSS. Hi everybody. I'm I am the, I'm sure you are not here to listen to me, so I will make it short and sweet. Um, one thing I, I want to just say is that um, we are not known uh, first and foremost as a song organization. Um, and, uh, but what I can say is that uh, the staff and board right now, and for some time at CDSS, 
has had a really deep appreciation for song and particularly the unique power of song to bring people together that is distinct from dancing together, um, just as sharing a meal together binds you in a very special and intimate way. Raising your voice together is incredibly powerful and healing and important to individual communities, but to the entire world. Um, so we, we are not putting ourselves forward as the experts because we have a lot to learn. What we want to do is help people find song near them. And to do that, we need to understand who is leading song, singing, community singing um, opportunities uh, across the country and, um, and how, who is creating the inroads to deeper exploration of specific traditions or uh, styles of singing. So um, more than anything, I wanna say thank you to each and every one of you that is doing that, that you're creating space for community song and people to experience singing together um, and to ask for your help in putting together the picture and helping others find you uh, more efficiently, which is what I think our organization, that's the role I think we can play. Um, so that's my spiel. Uh, let's get to Susanna. Okay, Susanna. Welcome, Susanna. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so let's see here. I, um, you can read about me here, which is a funny experience to stare at myself in a little circle there, but, um, really glad to get to be here and working with CDSS and, um, getting to think and, and share and communicate about what it looks like these days to be singing online. And, um, so what I'm actually going to do is, um, I'm going to uh, jump out of this mode here if I can. Um, so I can pull up a song. It's not letting me leave. Let me leave. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, so when, um, when you're singing initially, you get onto these calls and there's all these people. And a lot of what I get to do is not necessarily leading these one-off sessions, but um, one-off sing sessions, but I'm still leading mostly choirs and um, where I'm teaching the whole time. But one of the things, as Katie was saying, song holds this unique, this unique place in pulling us together. But another thing that I really love to push is to make us dance and have some wiggle. Um, often we stay very still and being a voice teacher, our whole body is the instrument. And so I want to just do a really tiny, um, easy song that you don't even have to, you don't have to learn. We're going to use these, um, these, the chat box. You can toss out some new ideas for me, but really it's a simple song that I grew up singing. Um, my mom learned this from Bessie Jones, um, when she was in her twenties or thirties or so. And, um, uh, her name, Bessie Jones, also her full name was Mary Elizabeth Jones. She was born in Georgia and she sang with the Georgia Sea Island Singers for a bunch of years, which is how um, I think that's when Alan Lomax found and, um, you know, connected with her. But it's a really simple song and the invitation is to use your body. So even if you, um, anytime we get on a webinar now or we're doing a sing thing, we kind of get frozen. So if you can see your box, push out of your box, you don't even have to be visible. Um, and this is a little song and you just call and response. You're going to sing along with me. And it goes like this, head with actions, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, baby, one, a two, three, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, baby, one, a two, three, that's the whole song. And then you're going to zipper in new body parts and you have to touch them and wiggle. So we're going to get uh, bends involved. So you're going to have your uh, nose and toes. Here we go. Nose and toes, baby, one, a two and three, and nose and toes, baby, one, and two and three, nose and toes, nose and toes, nose and toes, baby, one, two, three. As a kid, my favorite one was this. Rock the baby, baby, one, two and three. You rock the baby, baby, one, two and three. Rock the baby, rock the baby, rock the baby, baby, one, two and three. So when I'm singing in my community scene, I'll create songs like this, or not create them, I'll sing songs like this, and I'll ask my singers to pop different things into the chat. So while we're hanging out, if you open your chat box, 
Give me a couple new things and I sing yours. From Katie, we got Shin and Elbow Baby One, Two and Three, Shin and Elbow Baby One, and Two, Three, Shin and Elbow, Shin and Elbow, Shin and Elbow Baby One. Sing, sing, Sarah. Play the trumpet, baby. One, and two, and three. Play the trumpet, baby. One, two, three. Play the trumpet, play the trumpet, play the trumpet, baby. One, two, two. Ears and navels, baby. One, two, three. Ears and navels, baby. One, two, three. Ears and navels, ears and navels, ears and navels, baby. One. One more. What you got? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, someone's got to type something. Take it to the top. Head and shoulders. Here we go. Head and shoulders, baby. One, two, three. Pet the kitty, baby. One, two, three. Pet the kitty, pet the kitty, pet the kitty, baby. One, two, three. Da -da -da. Yeah. So a lot of what... um. What I find really important in, in these community singing situations is that as the singer um, that can hear yourself teaching, it's important that you like the song that you're teaching, that you know the song that you're teaching, <laughs> um, and that you have the words and you can credit as the best you're able where the song is from. So all these little pieces are really important. So one of the things that um, I like to stress is having your little box open, um, whatever song you, you um, sing, if you are giving words, you do give the words. Um, and then you'll do something like this. So I just hit copy, I had a little document open, and then here would come a little piece so that you could copy this out and save it for your records later. Who is it by, um, or who's it attributed to being learned from? And then if there's full lyrics, there you then have them, right? So it's a, it's a piece of, um, as tradition bearers, as people that share songs, we're responsible for that lineage as well as for the fun of getting to do it. So um, I saw a question that had come in actually um, regarding this um, talk about songs that aren't in English. And so wanted to, to introduce a song for you and just show what that would look like to teach songs that aren't in your native language. Um, so this is a song that I learned as a young person, uh, 12 or 13, and um, from a friend named Mary Kay Brass, another wonderful singer who's worked with CDSS for many years. And um, I'm just going to show you what this could look like to do a different format. Again, I would, instead of giving you all the verses and words at once, I'll give them to you in smaller hunks because our, our minds don't notice it the same way. So we'll have a little opportunity here to sort of try to read in the chat, etc. So this is a song, um, it's a Serbian song. It's called a Zape Vala Sojka Ptica. And you can't say that yet, but you're about to rock it. So here's the first verse. Oh, see, now that's mean. I'm going to give it to you. Let's see. Katie, will you type yay? And then, uh, then I'll, we'll have some space and it won't be connected to head and shoulders. All right, so here it comes to you again. All these little tricks of utilizing Zoom and utilizing your friends. If you have a tech person with you, then they can help do that. And if not, you know, it's just getting relaxed about doing this sort of thing. So repeat after me and then I will say the words with you again. So listen once. Zape vala soika ptica. We'll say it again. Zape vala soika ptica. Beautiful. Listen. Misli zora ye. Misli zora ye. Let's say from the beginning to there. Here we go. Zape vala soika ptica misli zora ye. And if you didn't know you were going to be trying to speak Serbian today, well done. All right, then we keep going and it says aman aman, aman aman. And we already know this last little bit. Misli zora ye. So let's say it one more time all the way through for words and just go for trying. Do your best. Zape vala soika ptica misli zora ye. Aman aman misli zora ye. Beautiful. Yeah. So here's how the melody sounds and I'll sing the whole thing for you once and then I'll teach it section by section as well. 
So here it is just to hear. Zape vala soi kaptitsa misli zoraye Amman amman misli zoraye so it's in seven eight. So let's clap this. We're gonna go or snap it. We have long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. Yeah. So that's our rhythm. So section by section, we have zape vala. Try that. Zape vala soi kaptitsa soi kaptitsa. Misli zoraye, misli zoraye. From the top, zape vala soi kaptitsa, misli zoraye. Beautiful. Next little section. Aman, aman, misli zoraye. Yeah, so aman, aman, right there, and aman, aman, misli zoraye. Let's do it again. A repetition is, is your best friend here. Ready? Da da da. Here we go. Zape vala soi kaptitsa misli zoraye Aman aman misli zoraye One more time Zape vala soi kaptitsa misli zoraye aman aman misli zoraye yeah and this group i know is singers so i chose a slightly harder song if we create a parallel harmony right above right it's going to give us a lovely two-part harmony so to just sort of the idea of that would go Zape vala soi kaptitsa misli zoraye Aman aman misli zoraye Yeah? So let's try um, Choose Your Own Adventure. I'm going to sing the top part one more time if you want to stick on the melody. Da da da. And the soprano, da da da. And if you want to just do dance moves, maybe we're not looking at your video and you just can rock that out and you just don't need to sing this one for right now. We'll just lullaby you. All right, da 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 da. Ready, dun da. Here we go. Zape vala soi kaptitsa misli zoraye aman aman misli zoraye Yeah, fabulous. So one of the things that I'll do often, um, so I, you know, teaching um, you sing on your own. So if you're really wanting to help provide harmonies as the singing um, teacher or leader, if there's something you really want to hear, you can pre-record it. And there's a lot of different um, apps and ways that you can do that. And so um, I'll play just that first verse with me pre-recorded. So then it's an ability for you to share your audio. Um, and I see here that Ben has asked, what do those lovely words mean? Why they are, that first verse, all we have said so far is that the jaybird began singing, thinking it was dawn. That's as far as we got. <laughs> um, but the whole song is uh, a conversation, as so many good traditional folk songs, a conversation between an animal and a person. Um, and you get to have that little dialogue back and forth. Often birds talk to us in songs. So if you listen closely, they'll help explain how to do this COVID thing. Pretty sure that's how that works. 
So let's do it one more time. And um, how this would work if I had you for longer is then I'd plug in the second verse and we do the second verse and the third verse. And then we just sing through our whole song. And that whole piece would take about, you know, 12 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes max. Um, takes longer when you're trying to learn something that's not in English because you've got to go over the words. But it's a really beautiful way to celebrate parts of the world that it is not where you're from. And as you can see here in my little bio thing, saying that I love to have conversations about social justice and big picture liberation. So um, any place that uh, there's conflicts or ways in which you can put your attention to a part of the world that's kind of, um, that can get a bad rap or that there's tension and then you get to just sort of re-celebrate something beautiful about their tradition. It's a way that here in America, we can, um, we can get to think more on different parts of the world and what our relationships to them can look like, specifically around the idea of not, not assuming that people's politics are the entire country. And so um, getting to sing traditional songs is a way of really celebrating the complexity of the human experience and the shared human experience. So um, it was saying, I was about to explain how to have more than one audio synced up. Um, so I've never done it yet where I have multiple ones sing. I've done it before where I'll have multiple tracks ready to go. Um, what I'm doing for you right now is I've already pre-recorded two parts together. And so we'll sing this first verse one more time with my pre-recorded um, parts. And I'm just gonna share um, my audio with you so it won't change any of what we're, um, oh. Hmm. It actually is telling me this is a tech thing I hadn't known. If someone else is sharing a screen, I cannot share my audio. Um, so this would be one of those moments that something does not go as planned. So let's just sing it again. Choose your own adventure. Fluid, relaxed. This is how it goes in the era of online COVID stuff. We could so, also not the... share. We could pause sharing our screen. Sorry, Nikki. We could do okay. that it, either way. Whatever we do, we need to be moving on very soon. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. All right. So you will maybe be able to see me here in a hot second, and we'll sing this first verse one more time, and then off we will go to our next presenter. As soon as I'm able. Let's see. Ooh, this is exciting. All right, I am sharing my sound. Here we go. Zapevala soy kaptitsa misli zorai hamanaman misli zorai. Yeah, excellent. Well done. Thanks so much, y'all. Great, Susanna. Thank you Pleasure. for starting it off singing. Happily. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. I'll introduce our next two guests, both of them long-standing organizers of song communities. Bruce Baker, for starters. Um, Bruce, can you just tell us a snippet about the Seattle Song Circle? Uh, yeah, Seattle Song Circle's been going on since the second Northwest Folklife Festival. And uh, so it's 1973. Um, they decided, why are we only doing this once a year? And when we go to the festivals or camps or something like that, there's a thirst to say, this is a lot of fun. Let's keep it going. So it's been going every Sunday for, you know, 40 years. And it's pretty stunning to think of a tradition that's gone on that long. Um, I got involved in the board of directors, you know, 30 years ago in that time, but my total passion um, has been getting people singing uh, pretty much anywhere I can. Uh, and it's a group, it's not a performance. I, uh, open mics don't do it in the same way. But when I get a whole bunch of people singing at a, at a Alzheimer's cafe, or at a senior center or at a farmer's market, that to me is gold. And uh, that's making it accessible. So 
um, there, there are things that I do uh, within a song circle. Uh, accessibility is everything. It's typically in um, living rooms, and it has been almost every commercial try we've done has not worked out well. Um, but uh, the senior the local senior center has worked out fairly well as a venue, and um, in that time, and and there've been with the camps that came, oh, probably 10, 15 years into it. Uh, rainy camp's been going now for 30 years, and uh, that's an entire weekend of singing together. And, um, you know, I think it well describes, maybe if someone wants to know what makes me tick, a woman wrote me afterwards, she said, music is your ministry. And I thought, wow, I never thought of it that way before. But it kind of explains it. Um, Bruce, so, what did you say about how COVID has expect, it's impacted your attendance? Right. Okay. So we go from a fairly, uh, fairly, you know, a sleepy group of maybe a dozen people up to a couple of dozen uh, special occasions, you know, with a potluck, it could be a, a few dozen. But consistently, there are a couple of things that happened with COVID. Um, number one is that it blew up geography. Uh, what had to be what people would travel to locally, um, no longer those barriers exist. So we'll have maybe a dozen or 15 states. Uh, we'll typically have four or five countries that are taking part. And, um, oh, for instance, on Labor Day, we had Labor Day. I said, hold on, folks, we've got five countries represented here. Let's go around and find out what the Labor Day tradition is in other countries. And being able to do that kind of culture, uh, cultural exchange and sharing is just incredibly powerful and is serendipitous. So Bruce, um, I think we're gonna need to move on to Deborah soon. So okay. if there's one more thing you were gonna say. Uh, no, from that, um, it's just to, uh, just to say that it it's, it's become virtual and I attend probably a half dozen, a lot of us do, including what Paul has in Portland and learning what works well in some places, adopting it and, um, and then getting a unique kind of a signature or personality. Great. Okay, next slide please. Introduce you to Deborah Chessman from Valley Folk Music in Corning, New York. So Deborah, can you give us just a quick glimpse of your saying? Hi, sorry. Um, normally we're a monthly folk concert series, um, but we have, you know, a jam before every concert. And then we, we have a, a very small pub sing once a month also in, in a, we finally found a place with real beer right before the COVID struck. But um, so we've just moved it onto Zoom for a weekly sing um, instead for now that, and it kind of incorporates all the, all the different aspects of what we do. You know, we, we gathered people from those different things and um, we haven't advertised ourselves in a big way in the US because we, there's so many things, so many communities doing them. And because ours was a little less of a singing community than I, than I would have liked it to be, um, we decided to buddy up with a singing community in England that I have ties with that I used to run when I lived there. So we, we build ourselves as a transatlantic Zoom sing just to get a different identity than some of the other things. And uh, we advertised it in England more than we did in the US. But we ended up with a mix of people from the West Coast and various places in the US, and then people from England, Scotland. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a nice mix, a half and half. Um, That's I, great, Deborah. I'm realizing we have a lot for you and Bruce to share with us. So um, I think we'll move on to our questions. Yeah. Um, so I have questions that Deborah and Bruce will think about and they'll answer whenever they have input about these questions. How do you invite people to your sings and give them access? Either of you can jump in. Well, I know Bruce and I do it differently. Um, the 
for Valley Folk, we have a monthly reminder list that sends out the link and we're using the same link for multiple times. Um, and then we've told people when that link will end and they'll have to get a new link. Um, the group that I'm involved with in England that, that, that I run half the time with the other uh, host, they prefer to put it on their website. So I insisted that they not have it like right on the website, but that you have to click through a couple of pages in order to get to the link. Um, so that keeps it a little more private. And um, th there are some pitfalls that I'll let Bruce talk, but, but if you don't do some things to keep the link a little more private, you do get Zoom bombed. And I've been involved with other groups who have made those mistakes and got themselves porn or white supremacists joining the meetings. So you don't want that. Bruce? Uh, yeah, I had to unmute uh, physically, not the space bar. Um, so getting the word out uh, really kind of went viral. Have a email list of about 250 people. Uh, the camp is another um, 180 or so. Uh, no, it's 300. And um, Facebook is another primary site uh, that is used and then the website itself and we do test to make sure that you can go through popular search engines and find it. Um, but the word gets out is what I found. Uh, someone will share something, especially social media, um, and that makes a difference. Uh, at some point, you have to manage something that is too successful and uh, m we may get into that later. Uh, but there is a size that, that becomes unwieldy, I would say somewhere around 50 or so. It'd be interesting to see what others think. Okay. Next. Could I also answer sure. that um, there is a calendar, a wonderful calendar that's been put together by Clara Jordan in Sheffield and Jeff Keller, who I think is in the Boston area. Yes. And it's, it's on the website of um, the I'm not sure the exact type, the, the Greater Boston Folk Song Society. I, I know Lynn Feingold is here from that organization. Um, and it, it's posted on their website. And any group that wants to be able to invite people from not their own singing community to uh, get invited or get the link, they can go to that calendar. There's things every day of the week. And it's very comprehensive. And it, it, it was a wonderful, um, uh, labor of love that the two of them combined their calendars and made it useful. Great. Yeah, same, same thing. I have all of those linked on the uh, Seattle Folklore Society virtual sync page as well. Okay. And uh, that happened immediately. I mean, when, when the shutdown happened, that page went right up and then it, it went through probably daily revision for the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Great. Next question, how do you create a welcoming and supportive community sing? Um, I know you both could talk about this topic for a long time. So just to pick your, your key points. Well, oh, key points. I, I think um, the actual, there's, there's some style points that go along with it. Um, there's a little bit of whimsy. Uh, that happens. I think that the chat that happens between songs is very important. And if you're too focused on the music itself, sometimes it can become sterile. And in fact, uh, and it's a testament that people come back uh, over and over again, and no one wants that genie to go back in the bottle when mm -hmm. we get this uh, disease behind us. Deborah? Yeah, every group has to find the right balance between letting people chat in between and having enough time for everyone to sing. And some of that depends on how big the sing is. I know one group in England um, that does a, uh, a monthly sing, when it gets to be a certain size, they actually break out into two rooms with a song leader in each room so that everybody can get a turn to sing, but they don't encourage talking in between because they're so big. Um, so, you know, every group has to find that right balance. Um, Okay. It's hard, but it's, you know, it is, what, I mean, what, if you divide the chores up into, you know, 
if you're if your group's more than about a dozen people somebody can you know have some co-hosts who can help mute people if they're unmuted and someone can greet people when they come in even if there's a song going on somebody can greet them in the chat and then you get a sense of if they're if that person is going to actually respond on chat or not because some people don't they don't have the technology it's not easy enough for them on a tablet so you get a sense of how you can communicate with those people um, and well, I'll let you move on to the next thing. I know Bruce and I could always talk four times as much <laughs> yes. you know, than the time. No kidding. Balance is, is where it comes down to, and experience is a key contributor to balance. Okay. How about how do you communicate the order of the singers? Who's singing when? Deborah, you want to go first? Well, I modified um, my my friend in England had a numbering system that was complicated and the, the time that I had to take over for him the first time I simplified it to just everyone gets a number when they join and then if they're going to be a singer and, um, you know, starting with zero one zero two and uh, that that lets everybody know when their turn is coming up. It's a little less spontaneous than the way we would do things in person where we would never do that, but um, it it um it makes it easy for the the host to see things in the participant list so you can find the person and call on them even if they're not on the same screen um it it makes it line up on the participant list really well um some of the other ways that other people do it is they if you're a singer they you give put an asterisk in your name and they call on you a lot of hosts spend a lot of time, you know, figuring out who's going to, who are the next three people and them announcing it or putting it in the chat. I don't think they have as much fun at the sing because they're so busy <sighs> behind the scenes. Um, and some, yeah, I, I mean, there's a few, there's a few other ways that people are doing it, but what's important is that, that you do it the way it works for your community. And oh, I, I also wanted to say one other point is that if you have a community where everybody knows everybody, like um, you could take turns within the community of sharing those host responsibilities. Sometimes the, the participants don't have as good of a sort of feel because maybe the host is new, inexperienced, a little nervous the first time, but it's okay if you're a closed community, everybody knows everybody. But if you're hosting people from outside, it, it might be a little more important to make sure that host is well practiced and gonna make everyone feel welcome so that if you do want people from the outside to come, that they do feel comfortable coming back because they won't be as forgiving as the people within your own community would be. I totally agree. Uh, again, it comes down to um, really the, <laughs> style the um the soul of it is what you're building and that is experience but also kind of a disposition i mean some some people may want to host but perhaps are not as well equipped at least initially uh to handle that um but i i split up with the two other hosts in that time it's it's fairly intense i mean hosting has you doing a lot of things okay i'm looking at the time um Nikki, next slide, please. We had chosen many more things to talk about and we need to end now because we will be uh, cutting the Q&A and the breakout rooms short if we don't. So I'm gonna suggest that we, uh, I think some of the handling tech issues questions will probably come up during the Q&A. So we'll talk more about those then and for optimizing audio settings, take a look here on the screen. This is a, a topic that we don't have time to go in depth for. So there are, there's information there about finding great instructions online. Next slide, please. Oh, let me just thank Deborah and Bruce for your input and perspectives and we will continue hearing from you during the q a uh, just quickly a couple of um, ideas and some, uh, uh, options from other groups this is a group from Asheville, north carolina that's meeting weekly in a public park and keeping their social distance and their main challenge that they mentioned was staying close enough to be heard 
but far enough away to be safe. Next slide. This is a very unique, uh, innovative group in Newton, Massachusetts. The Norvega Harmony is trying out a new experience of drive-in singing, which I had never heard of. And there's an explanation there on the screen. Everybody's in their cars with wireless mics. It be the feeds into the mixer to broadcast over their, radio, their car radios with no delays. So they are, uh, they do, they are finding that there are significant hurdles with the cost and the tech expertise, but they feel that this is working for them to help them sing together. So those are two possibilities. Next slide. I'll now introduce you to Emily Addison, the CDSS Community Resources uh, consultant. Consultant, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So All right. take it away, Emily. All right, great. So um, we wanted to share some resources that you might find helpful in the next few months. Um, so there's some on this slide and the following. These focus specifically on COVID. Um, so you may be familiar with our resource portal. And we now have a section specifically for resources relating to these COVID times. There's a tab for organizers and there's a tab for freelancers. Um, and so we will be populating that there's some resources there already, including CDSS's statement um, on COVID for organizers. Um, but we would love some additional suggestions from you, our, uh, the wider community on resources that you're finding helpful at this time. So you can share resources there. Also, um, Deborah already mentioned one really great event calendar. CDSS also has an events calendar and it has, uh, it's solely online events right now. There's some really great events coming up. Um, some trad song as well as dance and music online concerts and you can submit your own events. So if you're running a trad song online event, please submit it. And um, you may also be interested in sharing the events calendar with your community. And then we also wanted to highlight that CDSS has a way of supporting gigging artists right now. And that includes singers, of course, as well as musicians and callers. Um, and if you follow the link cdss.org slash send love, there's a number of freelancers listed there in ways that you can support them or your community can support them. Next slide. Emily, that's also a space where that it can be added to. So if yes. you are a gigging artist or you know people that are looking for community support during this time, that's another place where they can post information about themselves and how best uh, for our community to support them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So please add, your, add yourself. There's a form for that. Um, so just mentioning the portal again, because in addition to the COVID specific resources, there's a section in the portal specifically for song organizers. And there's some really neat resources there. That's a new section as of January of this year. So if you haven't visited the song organizers portal, uh, check that out. Uh, we also have a quarterly newsletter called Shop Talk for organizers, including song organizers. And that's a great way we promote or share information about new resources that are coming out within the community. And then Shared Weight has a new, as of January, song organizers listserv. So that's an email group and it's a small group, um, but it is a fun group. They're just getting going. Um, so you can join if you're interested and connect with other song organizers throughout North America. And that could even be to continue the conversation that started today. If there's lots of really great questions and comments and ideas coming up, join the Shared Weight song list and then you can continue that conversation. Great. CDSS also has a grants program to support organizers with projects and events to boost your communities. And we are now offering funding for racial justice training as well. And there's information on the website about applying for grants. Web chats, of course, uh, we have, this is our fourth web chat this year. And there are, uh, we've done a total of 10 now, and there's information on the CDSS web chat website.
for previous web chats on many topics. We also have a quarterly newsletter with, that often includes helpful articles for organizers and we are offering one-on-one -on -one support from CDSS. You can contact us with particular questions or issues that you're dealing with in your communities. We also want to encourage all of you to consider joining CDSS if you haven't already. And if your group would like to benefit from many um, options here, it's, um, we encourage you to become a CDSS affiliate. So you can see there some of the benefits, insurance, 501c3 status, receiving discounts and advertising in the newsletter and on our, in our store materials as well as being listed in the CDSS directory. So there's a link there if you're interested in finding out more about joining. Next slide. So for following up, we very much would appreciate hearing from all of you about your web chat experience. We take this, your comments to heart and they are very helpful as we're planning future web chats. You can also ask for, you can also contribute your ideas for future topics. And next week you'll be able to view the video for this web chat as well as the PowerPoint and the chat bar transcription. So feel free to share that with any friends who weren't able to join, join us tonight. Our next web chat is coming up in mid to late October. We'll be announcing the exact time and date soon. Topic is let's talk about reentry, working now for a strong future. So stay tuned for details on that. And we welcome your questions and comments and requests for ways that CDSS can better support your community. So that is the email right there, resources at cdss.org that will reach me. And if I can't answer your question, I'll find a CDSS staff member or CDS member who can, can help you find the answers that you need. So we'll be turning it over here. Next slide. <laughs> Uh, Sarah will be moderating the Q&A. Over to you, Sarah. Great. Um, I know that we've had some questions come in through chat already, um, but just opening this up, if you have any questions about the presentation today, what Bruce or um, Deborah or Susanna are doing in their song communities, please feel free to keep entering those in the chat. And in the meantime, I'll read out some that have been submitted already and any of our panelists are welcome to jump in and answer. Sarah, let me just insert one thing. Yeah. Um, Deborah and Bruce didn't have time to share their wealth of experience in relation to tech aspects, uh -huh. how to handle tech issues that show up during their sings, et cetera. So if anybody has questions along those lines, feel free to put them in the chat. Great. Um, so two related questions. Um, I think this is for the community song circles, but could also be for chorus rehearsals. Um, do you decide the song list ahead of time? Uh, definitely don't choose the song list. It's highly uh, organic. And in fact, um, it, it's like a musical Escher. Uh, painting, you know, where you'll start out with fields on one side and you'll end up with birds on the other. Um, it will morph and it's really, really fun to watch how that happens. I do encourage people to maybe uh, practice a song ahead of time, at least, you know, have a, have a few kind of half ready that you've looked at recently. It depends on the level of the singers that if you know your singers, but I, I do know there are there is at least one song circle in Connecticut where the song leaders are chosen ahead of time and they submit the lyrics to the chorus ahead of time. Um, but that's a song uh, community where there's few song leaders and mostly people just join in the chorus, but not a community of full participants the way I think Bruce's and my communities might be. Yeah, uh, Beaverton, Oregon, 
and uh, Redmond Washington are two examples of things that are precast ahead of time and it seems to work quite well. And I would just jump in for some newer for some newer groups of people that are looking to join singing things, it can be really helpful and inclusive for them to have words. So if there are, say, a handful of people in your community that have word sheets available in, you know, and they can just copy and paste it, it can make it more accessible to some folks who are sort of discovering this sort of thing for the first time. So I've gotten a lot of feedback around how that makes it more inclusive for newer singers to this kind of style. Great. Thanks. Um, new question came in that's actually similar to one that was um, put in the chat earlier. Um, for your sessions, do you mix people who are singing on Zoom with live singers? Um, I'm not entirely sure what that might look like. Um, so I guess, is, are there some people participating real time together live with also having people on Zoom? Or is it everybody on Zoom, a mix? Can you talk a little bit about that? If I think I'm understanding the question, um, I mean, it's sort of one Zoom square singing at a time, but it's a real treat if you happen to sing with your spouse or other housemates that you live with, because when you, when you get a Zoom square where there's harmony being sung to the rest of us, it, it's just such a treat. But there, there, it isn't really possible because of the lags and the laws of physics um, to, for other people to sing at the same time as each other. And I would say teaching at Warren Wilson College, I actually have to do that. Some of the students, they can opt to do it virtually. And then if I have an in-class time, I'm having to teach both to the computer and to the room. And it's really hard and I would not actually recommend doing it. It's, it's really talk about like triple multitasking. It's um, yeah, I would say that as of right now, it's not really worth it. Although I did have an idea that I cannot talk my daughter, my daughter lives in England. Um, and what I wanted to do is be on the zoom on my computer and pull her up on messenger and have her sing a song and hold it up and, and maybe, maybe a little farther back and me harmonize to her singing. We haven't tried it because she won't do it, but I think that might be possible. And if somebody would want to do that with me, that would be a lot of fun to try. Oh yeah, absolutely. Write me in the script on that. Um, there in, in a hybrid notion, and again, it's the genie's out of the bottle. People have had such a great time meeting a large community. It went from, you know, a dozen or so up to uh, three or four times that. Um, they don't want it to stop. And so when we become virtual or a, in person again, I think it, there will be a hybrid at least on a regular basis, probably monthly, that will, I'm thinking of a projector and having people in other cities join in. Um, but uh, there is, no one wants to give that part up. We've discovered something. Actually, the, the Golden Link um, Folk Song Society in uh Rochester, New York, because they've enjoyed the sing so much and on the virtual ones. And we've just discovered that it serves a slightly different community within their community because certain people that are a little more homebound or some of the people that lived in Rochester but have moved away, but you know, we're all now more connected because of, you know, you can do it from home. So they're actually thinking that once a month, possibly after COVID's over, because they meet every Tuesday, they're thinking once a month, possibly having a hybrid system where they they somehow zoom in those of us who are dispersed so that we can be at the in-person Tuesday night virtually if that makes any sense um, there's a lot of questions about specific apps that might allow people to sing together um, have any of you tried there's one called Jamulus um, Ron wants to know if you've anybody's tried that tried it you have to have a local server and it's still uh, fights with the speed of light. That's a law that's a difficult one to break. Yeah, I haven't found anything great yet, but I, I know that there's so many tech people trying to help think about how this is possible. Um, so I think that we'll probably come up with something soon-ish, but most of what I've seen has to keep you kind of definite, like area code specific, you know, it's like, um, so we'll, it'll, it's, there's nothing great yet. 
at, at the time that they discover something, maybe they'll have um, ethernet ports in all the computers again, but so many people don't even have that capacity. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm tech support for a lot of people because I spent um, a career working in networking for a major networking company. And uh, so I try to shift all of that out away from the circle itself offline. Great. Um, if anybody else has questions, um, we could probably take one or two more specifically if anybody had questions about audio uh, settings bring, in Zoom. We can bring questions in from the what we didn't have time to mm -hmm. talk about before. How, how about handling tech issues that arise during your sings? You've talked about having spotters, sound spotters. How does that work? So a sound spotter, uh, how many people sing into a mute or talk into a mute? Uh, it happens all the time. And if you, if you have a sound spotter, someone that's designated, watch this person, um, then they'll use hand signals to get around that. And you can save a fair amount of time and frustration. By the way, everyone should have the same thing in a concert. How about you, Deborah? Well, you know, actually, be before I got my own Zoom account, we were using someone else's account, actually in Brittany, for, for the, the club in England. And she forgot to, like, log into the meeting and give us the, the tools. So we actually ran a sing pretty early on without the tools. And, you know, hand signals, cue cards that say, please mute. <laughs> and then you add the name David, you know. It's just, you, you, just kind of make do with with what you have. Um, it, I would say in the beginning of COVID, we spent a lot of time at the beginning of every meeting talking about the tech because there were some people quite resistant to get, you know, just like everybody had to at least have original sound turned on if, if they didn't get any of the other details. But, you know, walking people through that sometimes. Um, so if you are starting up a circle, you want to start up and have people say, if you haven't been here before, please come like 20 minutes early, half an hour early because it, it can cut into the singing time too much in the beginning. Now everybody's got the settings. Um, and by the way, just to make sure everybody knows, Zoom um, updated their version in September. So yeah, I recommend everybody get the newest version. Um, they've packaged together some of the music settings to make it simpler and have fewer settings to choose from. So, uh, and not everybody has their websites updated yet with the new settings. So just that's in the works. Can I also add that create you utilizing the breakout rooms to help the people that might be joining new is another really useful way um, have put a star if you need help and then you can create a breakout room of singers and a breakout room of people that just need some tech support and that's been really effective where everyone's not sitting through the most recent version but other people really get caught up with you. Susanna that is a perfect segue next slide. <laughs> hey! So I know many of you have questions that weren't answered. Um, so we hope that you will continue to use things like shared weight um, and be in touch with us and follow CDSS resources. Um, we are very much wanting to encourage this network of song circles. So Crispin will be coordinating our breakout rooms. And I'm just gonna send love. I have to teach a voice lesson. So here's where I drop out. But much thank love. you. Thank you so much for letting me be a part it, of it. This it's season. been wonderful to have you, Susanna. My total pleasure. Be well and happy singing all. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're gonna move over to breakout rooms, which will be uh, groups of three or four people. And this is just an opportunity for everyone to talk about, um, you know, share any experiences you're having in your community or, you know, talk through any ideas you want to try out with some other people. Um, it's pretty random who you get sorted to just out of the people who are here, but you're all interested in um, 
folk singing and finding ways to get people together doing that in this time. So hopefully uh, you will have uh, stuff to talk about. And I think we've put 15 minutes on the schedule yes. for this, after which we'll bring everyone back into the main session so to Christian, wrap up. Let me just chime in to say that it might be helpful to have somebody keeping an eye on the time so that you can make sure each person has a chance. And if you could just take a minute or two in the beginning to go around and introduce yourselves and then make sure each person has at least a few minutes to answer this question and you might have a couple minutes at the end to share as a group. Okay, so if we're ready to go in that case, we'll, um, we'll go for that and see you back here in 15 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. A lot of uh, happy, inspired, connected looking faces out there. This is, this is what keeps us going. There's Linda. Hi, Linda. Linda, you are muted, but we would love to hear you. Okay, Katie, over to you for some closing comments. Yes, yeah, thank you all for joining tonight. Um, as I said, we are, um, CDSS is a community supported, member supported organization. Um, we, we put this on today because of staff time and all the resources that we're compiling um, are put together by a paid staff. We are a kind of unique organization in that we pay people to be folkies. Um, We'd like to continue doing that. We'd like to continue meeting the needs of communities and organizers and people across the country during these difficult times. If you're not already a member of CDSS, we'd love for you to check it out and join cdss.org. Um, my email is katy at cdss.org. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have about the work that CDSS is doing, what we could do differently or better, and ideas that you have um, for the future of song communities. So um, I hope that you will check us out. And thank you so much for joining today. We'd also like to close by taking a screenshot of these wonderful singers. So if you would prefer, these screenshots could appear in the CDSS news or other places. So if you would rather your face not be appearing publicly, be just, you can just use your mute. And maybe we can all, we, we were going to wave, if you're willing. Yes. Look excited. So, Emily, you're going to be our photographer. Okay. One, two, three. I'm just going to make sure I've caught it. Good. It looks great. Thank you. And I want to th thank every one of you here for the very difficult work that you're doing. Um, at CDSS, we're very aware that song communities and dance and music communities are in a tenuous place right now. And so being together in this way, and I hope you made some connections in your breakout rooms that you, people that you can be in touch with. Um, we just really value you hanging in there and doing whatever you can to keep people connected and singing together if possible. Um, so we hope you will think of CDSS as your personal support and let us know if there are particular things that we can do to help you in your communities. So it's time to say farewell. Um, some of you may be seeing friends across the country so you can wave or even chat for a minute if you want. We can take a few minutes to close. Um, I guess folks can unmute, right, if they want for a moment. Okay. Thanks for doing this. That's That was great. <laughs> Bye. This is Thank, really nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, everyone. Good night. 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 Good